This week we're looking at fitting lights to a Class 66. We're also going to take a look around Ashton Models in Wigan. See if I can't return a model which I bought which didn't quite turn out as I wanted it to. And then we're going to get some updates on the layout. Let's have a go. Hello. So yesterday I went to Ashton Models in Wigan, my regular model rover shop. Um, superb owner Stuart, really nice shop. Uh, I'm actually going to show you a bit of that today, hopefully. And I bought this, this lovely little Batman. Uh, I think it's a 4MT. Um, it says DCC ready on it. Um, Batman, at this point in their existence, were liars. Well, what they should have said is it has a DCC socket on it, but all the best with luck trying to actually get to the damn thing without destroying the loco. So rather than tempt fate and rip it apart, I mean, even Richard at Roads and Rails has said, nah, I'm not doing it. Well, so that's, that should tell you how, how bad it actually is if a professional DCC sound fitting guy doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to take it back. Stuart said we can swap it for something else. So we're going to have a look and see if we can pick out a nice new shiny loco.
normally enjoy looking around Ashton models, it's the one I go to all the time now. It's a proper little treasure trove, of course, he does model railway stuff, but it's like, it's a proper model shop, like a proper old school model shop. Everything from your ancient action men to Steve Austin stuff, and all points in between, so if you're in the Wigan area, give him a try. Anyway, look at what I bought, this little beauty. Oh, look at that. He's only gone and bought Evening Star. And this Evening Star goes with that Evening Star, whose nameplate needs to be readjusted. So I've got like the grandson and the grandfather. <laughs> so I'm really happy with that. It does need a little bit of um, maintenance. It needs a good, clean, first of all, pickups need adjusting. And a good... Uh, running in as they all do I'm then going to in the future we're going to crack the tender open I'm going to fit a separate decoder because there's not a lot of room in there for a sound chip or a speaker but there is in there so I'm going to crack that open add pickups to the bottom of the uh, tender and put a second sound put, put a second chip in there a sound chip so the chip in there will run the locomotive and that will be the sound so that's something for later on. Anyway, I'm really happy with that, that's nice. And I'll be able to do some weathering on that. Make it look properly good. Awesome. Uh, you may remember last week we, well I, purchased a Holby Class 66, which you can see the body of here. Now, as standard, these units do not come with lights, so I am going to fit them with lights. Uh, just basic lighting though, just the front headlights and rear headlights. I'm not going to bother with tail lights because most of the time I run my locals in a train and only have details on one end and the rear end usually is just for like coupling and things like that so there's not really a need in my mind to have a, a deluxe lighting suite if you will although it would have been just as easy to do that it would have just involved getting a few different colours of LEDs together so, without further ado, you can see here that we started by simply drilling out holes in the body shell with a little pin drill, um, roughly to the size of the size of the LEDs, so you can just see what we're doing there, look. and then we're going to put the body shell back on and then drill through the holes we drilled in the body, through them into the chassis, so the LEDs will sit better once we've mounted them. There is quite a lot of body on and body off stuff, but it, you know, it's a process and I'm aware that there is a kit available from, I believe it's Express Models for, I think it's around 20 quid plus delivery. It's worth mentioning that the full set of these LEDs cost me about £6.50, £6.50, quid, quid. I mean they're only 99 pence each so seven of them so about just under seven quid then it was super easy as well for me it was anyway to set them up so anyone can do it really provided you you know take your time and look at the uh, requirements for your wiring if you look at the inside of the body you will notice there is a eight pin socket and if you look at where the decoder plugs into it, the pinhole to which the blue wire goes to is common positive, I believe. Um, you run a wire from that to a little pad of copper. I have some old um, fret board from a set of couplings I had and I just sold the one wire from there to that and then one from the white wire to a separate one and then one from the yellow wire to the separate one. The yellow wire is the rear lights, the white wire is the front lights and the blue wire is the corn positive. So each LED will go to the corn positive and the front lights will go to the, the white and then the rear will go to the yellow which are all things that you'll see later on in this video. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage that this video is not really a tutorial, it's just more like a video, for lack of a better word, 
um, a video diary, time lapse of me performing the operation, if you will. It's just something to watch. It gives you an idea of the various stages that I went through to do it. A lot of wires everywhere. That's more down to me not really knowing where to route them or what correct length of wire I was going to need. So at the beginning here, like you can see there, I have all the wires absolutely everywhere. What I did later on is I went back into the body and trimmed them all back down. Just had the one wire running down into the uh, into the chassis there and here you can see the three brass tabs we're going to solder each of the wires to later on here i'm just preparing the wires for the white the yellow and the uh, blue which is the front lights rear lights and the color positive just twisting them off and tinning them so when i do put them into the decoder socket pinholes for lack of a better word i'm not sure what a technical term would be it's quite difficult to speak and think at the same time especially when like me you don't read from a script anyway i digress with them being tinned they will be a lot easier to solder in and you'll be placing heat on there for less which means you are far less likely to cause damage <laughs> despite the fact that i have my living room light on unfortunately it's not the best so i've got this little torch and it does end up in my mouth a few times <laughs> i could probably do with investing in one of those little hats with the top with a torch built into them so <laughs> that might make an appearance later on There we go, I told you the top is in the gob and you can just see now I'm tinning the circuit board and I'm just threading the wire through there. A little bit of solder on there and she grabs. Nice and easy. Nice hot soldering iron. Nice pre-tin surfaces. Makes this whole process a lot easier. But with that being said, I do think that if I ever did this again to a different railroad model, um, it'd probably be either to another 66 or a class 37. No, in fact, yeah, it probably would be a class 37. Um, I'll be doing a nice little network rail one. I think that'll look quite nice you know, on the layout there. Again, just a basic model, but you can just drill out the lights and add them to it. So that might be something that happens in the future. I don't know. I mean, to be absolutely fair, this little Hornby Class 66, once you adjust the pickups, because, of course, they were barely touching the wheel backs as it was, uh, now they are properly touching the wheel backs, and the local runs much smoother, especially after being bedded in. So, as far as running goes, the little, um, the little railroad range isn't too bad. And like I say, fitting these lights, as, you, as, you, as you've seen, it's not really been anything overly complicated. It just takes a little bit of time and a very small amount of forward thinking. Something of which I'm not fantastic at. But I don't think we can argue too loudly with the results uh, of which we're going to have a look at in just a moment. So here we go now, it's back on the layout, body back on in place, we're going to put the power on and as you can see, once I finally turn the thing on, the lights actually do work rather nicely. Um, they're a little bit bright as you can tell but don't worry, I've since gone back and dulled them down with a little bit of painting inside of the body just to help that chassis um, stop the light bleed as much. And then also I've, I've added uh, paint to the outside lens as well, just so it's not nuclear bomb bright. But for seven quid, I've now got lights on a class 66, so... So that's a proper win for me, is that? If you want to see me fit lights to another railroad model, um, probably 37 to be fair with you, then just let me know in the comments, folks. Jolly good, let's crack onward. So for now, it's back to developing the street scene a little bit. Today, we're going to put some paving down and design a building. I've got that nice little building there from uh, Batman Syncraft. I'm sorry about the lack of light in here. It's nine o'clock in the morning, but 
there's also a rain storm outside so I have no light whatsoever so we're just going to have to deal with the way things are. I can increase the gain but it looks all pixelated a bit there we are. Anyway, let's see how we get on with this little street scene. Okay, so I've got the paving PVA down, put in place, and then this little section here is where we fill the buildings we want to be. Got a little industrial unit on the end there, and then there's some houses next to it, just a few rundown houses, big enough. It's a one way street, so you've got enough room for a wagon to go down the uh, street there. So, yeah, happy with that. We need to put a house in the corner as well, so this is what we're going to do next. Off to Inkscape it is. So we've designed a basic cutout for the buildings. I'm just waiting for the printer to print those out. Then it's over to the design desk of Doom, where we stick it to a piece of card, cut round all the bits and pieces, windows, window ledges, doors, roof frame, etc, etc, etc. And then we wrap it with a texture. This bit is always bloody fiddly, and it's the least favourite part of making your own buildings. Yes, it's cheap, but you know, as you'll see, things don't always go quite as we plan them. Anyway, the next section is sticking the window frames to a little piece of uh, clear acetate there, and then just gently scoring around the window frames. Then you can peel them out with a blade, and then you stick the whole thing behind your building and you have something which resembles a window frame. Well, at least that is the theory. Um, let's have a look at how it turned out, shall we? And this is the annoying thing about making things from flaming card, is you're careful and you measure everything out and still things go wrong. And this is now fucking scrap. So that's three hours down the drain. <sighs> really, really difficult to get going when you know you've just wasted three hours of one of your only two days off a week. <sighs> so that's it for this week. No more. I'm going to just buy loads of buildings and use them because I'm sick of wasting time. Well that's it for this week boys and girls, a bit frustrating when things don't go as they're planned but there we go, This is things are sent to test us, they won't give up, I'm probably going to approach the building on a street scene uh, in a different way, I've done the card scratch thing, it, it looks okay but it's a lot of effort, I may look at some Metcalf kits, they're pretty good, really robust bits of kit, or I may even get some more scene craft stuff, so what do you think? Car construction for me now is no longer a viable option. <laughs> That, was, that didn't work well at all. Anyway, a nice little uh, bit of sightseeing there at Ashton Models and the DCC fitting of the lights to that little railroad, <laughs> sort of railroad 66 was quite challenging. But I'm glad to say I persisted with it and the success rate was about where it needed to be really. Seven quid's worth of LEDs and I've got a, a light fitted model which was never really designed to have lights in the first place. So I would call that a win. Was that something you enjoyed? Let me know. And remember, do please subscribe if you've not already subscribed, because most of my views come from people that aren't subscribed, which absolutely baffles me, but there you go. Don't forget, I'm going to be at Wally National Model Railway Exhibition in two days' time, actually. So if you're there, do pop along and see me. I believe Jenny Kirk, and we'll be over at the massive Pal Brick Wagon. I think the first meeting point is at 2 o'clock. Hopefully, we'll see you all there. Take care, folks, and ta-ra.